three, two, one. Hey family, it's Joseph here again. Now you have heard me talk about how tech sales has changed my life. I actually wanna introduce you to another career that if you decide to go into it, truly is recession proof, and that is cybersecurity. Level Careers is a platform similar to Course Careers that is self-paced and allows you to obtain knowledge and ed education in cybersecurity, and get this, without prior experience or a degree. That's right. And so you definitely want to get into that. And if you are interested in learning more about cybersecurity, go ahead and click the link below. It's in my description and use my promo code Joseph10. That's right. Use my promo code Joseph10 in order to save 10% off of the purchase price of that course. So without further ado, I'm not going to delay you. Go click on the link, check out the free introductory courses and change your life today. Oh man, I'm just calculating in my mind the travel that you had to do. Yeah, you so, did a lot yeah. of traveling before uh, you even uh, got. Hour one forty five up and hour one forty five back, bro. And you still had to go to work, you had to drop your wife off. Yeah. I, I did a little bit of travel, so that was just nothing compared. I think the work, the thing, the longest travel I did was when I used to live in New York and work in New Jersey, and that was actually pretty pretty rough. That was like two two hours and change. I'm trying to think of how much time it was. It was definitely because of rush hour traffic yeah. and ATL traffic is serious. Yeah, that traffic, <laughs> that traffic will do you in more. It's not for the faint of heart. And so, like, I'm thinking about it like, man, that, that shows commitment, though. That shows commitment to not only your job, what you want to do, but it also shows you commitment to your family. And so, my question to you now is because I know a little bit about your story. When was that transition from, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm hustling because these are the dreams I had. I'm working with dogs. I'm doing Kroger's to, okay, I need to get into tech sales. Is there something, I mean, you can fill in the gaps if I'm missing anything in between, but like, when did you transition over into deciding, hey, I want to get into this industry? Yes. Again, I always wanted to be able to work for myself and be independent. So I love working with dogs. Don't get me wrong. I got an opportunity to work with probably the majority of the working breeds in the world. I got to work with dogs that I only saw online. I got to work with them in person. So it was like, I had never seen a Doberman Pinscher in real life, but I was working with Doberman Pinschers imported from Serbia. I had never seen a Russian Terrier before. I'd never seen a giant Schnauzer in person before. I'd never seen a Great Dane in person before. I'm working with all these yeah, to all these different dogs and then Huge all these dogs. <laughs> yes, and then I'm seeing these the beautiful working with these German shepherds and these Dutch shepherds and Belgian Malinois, all the police dogs and all of that stuff, man. So it was amazing. I wouldn't trade I wouldn't trade it for nothing. It, but again, I was working, I was still working for somebody. So I was always looking for an opportunity to own my own or at least be in a capacity where I could operate fully within my gifts that help bring more to the table than just an employee for a company. I was dog training for world class for about three years. And, but I was always, I was big on trying to grow on social media. And Julius to tell you this, cause I used to tell him about me growing on social media too. So he'll tell you, he was telling me this back in 2000. In, uh, in 18, I'm asking him like, Jew, I found this course online about how to grow on social media and everything like that. And he kind of like just blowing me off, but he didn't really think I was going, you know what I'm saying? So it's funny now, but and he, and it was He's crazy. Like, that's not for me. Huh? He's like, that's not for me. And it's crazy because he blew up on social media on accident. Like I saw his YouTube channel. And when once I got close with him and we started talking, like he, he would just literally just post some videos of his training of his dog and they just was like going viral. So he was getting like 500,000 views, 900,000 views on these videos of his dog. And it's just like, and he was just posting them out. He didn't know anything about no strategies or anything like that. So it just, just grew organically for him on the YouTube side. But yeah, so I would tell him about that. So that I was doing that type of stuff when I was, when I was off work. I'm trying to figure out how I can grow online, how I can grow my brand on social media and all that kind of stuff. So I ended up finding Brother Ben X course called Digital Real Estate Now, but it wasn't digital real estate then, but he was a so he's a social media influencer and he was teaching people how to grow online. So when he said that, I was like, I know this brother, I trust this brother. I can learn how to grow my social media brand from him. 
So I paid for the course. I started learning how to grow my brand online. And in the process of me doing that, uh, again, I always wanted to do something entrepreneurial. And I one of the things that I didn't have when I was dog training was it wasn't a job traditionally that had like health benefits and PTO and all of those different things. So while you got, I got all the different experiences of being with the dogs and things like that, as far as security wise, it wasn't as secure. So if I needed to take time off from work, then when I wasn't working, I wasn't getting paid. I didn't have the option of like PTO and all of that stuff. But that was just, that was a big thing. And it didn't have the health insurance and stuff like that. Working with these big dogs and doing a lot of stuff in the bite suit and having these dogs biting on you and pulling on you and all of that kind of stuff. I was like, yo, I need to find something with some health insurance because if I get hurt messing with the dogs, I'm gonna be in trouble. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be out of commission. And that just wasn't what I was trying to do. So I decided that I wanted to find a job that was gonna give me some type of health benefits in the process of me trying to do, growing my brand on social media. Because at this point I'm putting out videos online. I'm doing a lot of community activism and giving my thoughts and perspective and things like that on different events that's taking place in our community. So I left World Class Canine and I started actually working at a dialysis center, which was, yeah, way more chill. Didn't have to be outside in the elements with dogs and all that, literally kicking back in the office. I can do more stuff on my phone now, all of that kind of stuff. So it was really good. And again, I'm the whole time I'm still in the class learning how to grow my brand on social media. And I did that for about a year at the dialysis clinic. And then some from some friends of mine, I don't know if you're familiar, with these influencers on social media, but they started their own company, 19 Keys, a brother Ben X, a couple of other brothers came together and formed a company that was called a BWO. And in that company, brother Ben and his business partner at the time, as the company grew, they hired me on to work as a social media manager and as pretty much almost PR because I was putting together interviews from the relationships that I built, getting them on different platforms and things like that. So I was like PR and social media management. So when they offered me that full-time role in 2021, I left the dialysis clinic and I started working full-time with that, which was <clears throat> extremely in my space at that point because I was independent. I was as an independent contractor, entrepreneurial. I had uh, grown my brand online from scratch. I had got a couple of thousand followers on social media. So my channel was growing, my other platforms were growing and things like that. So it was, it was good. Everything was good. And then the company, oh, I was asked to speak in Puerto Rico at a conference. That was my first time speaking at a conference in Puerto Rico in 2021, as it pertains to social media brand building. So I was able to do that. That was another accomplishment. And then at the end of 2021, the company dissolved. So when the company dissolved, the people that was on staff, obviously we had to find another another opportunity. I've been hustling since day one. Okay, how are we gonna do this? I bounced around looking for some different things. I actually did a little bit, went back and did some dog training for a little bit back with World Class and Julius, because me and him are still close to this day. So I was up, went back up there, was doing some work with them. And it wasn't until the company went dissolved at the end of 2021. And it was pretty much from January of 2022 to July of 2022. I'm just trying to figure it out. We doing some different things. Like I said, I bounced around, did some dog training, and then was doing some security work, just trying to keep some money in my pocket because I had got demonetized on social media. Oh, wow. Yeah, because of 20, but in 2021, not only was I making money as a social media brand builder and PR with my position with the other company, but I also uh, was getting paid from, so, from my Facebook. I was getting paid from my social media platform. So when I got demonetized in July of 2022, outside of not having the money from the contract that I had as a brand builder and then getting demonetized, I was completely at zero. So mm. we was trying to figure everything out. And then it wasn't until the, the beginning of July, I found out about tech sales. I was saying to myself that I want to go back to school because I want to be able to learn how to do something in technology. Back when I first had graduated, I was going to go to school for, for information technology, computer science. Back then, originally I was going to go to school for criminal justice. 
But then criminal justice, that went away. So then I said, let me get into information technology. And now fast forward to 2022, information technology comes back again. For whatever reason back then, I wasn't able to complete it because I started college, didn't finish college, life happened, children happened, all these different things, wasn't able to do it then. So now fast forward to 2022, it's back on my mind. So I said, I'm going to school and I'm gonna learn something in tech because I'm sitting at work one day and the security site that I was on also had a Tesla charging station. So I had already been familiar with Bitcoin. I had been familiar with different cryptocurrencies, familiar with, with VR and seeing all those different things happening in the world, a lot of technical things that's just going on. So I'm hip, I'm already into digital real estate. So I'm tapped in with social media and all of that. So I'm sitting at work one day and I'm just watching all of these cars throughout my, all the Teslas come and getting charged. And I'm like, dang, I wonder who owned these Tesla charging station because this has got to be lucrative. And I'm thinking now they just released the Tesla semi truck. So now I'm saying they have to have Tesla charging stations for the semis on the highway. Breaking this stuff down, I'm saying, okay, if you got a Tesla charging station, then you got pieces and components that make up a Tesla charging station. So somebody has to provide those components. Then you have to have tech technicians and people to come service them and work on them to make sure that they work properly, all of these different things. So my mind just started breaking down all of the different possibilities in tech. And this is gonna be moving forward. The Tesla car was one of the first electric vehicles. And now you see every car manufacturer producing a some type of electric vehicle. Mercedes-Benz has one now, Chevy has one, Ford has, all of them have electric vehicles now. Now you got electric semis, right? So everything is moving towards that. So I'm saying to myself, this is an industry that's growing. I need to get into tech. And the Follow way that, trend. yes, because it's trending up and moving forward. And one of my friends told me, he gave me this analogy about Home Depot. He was like, Home Depot sells houses. And I said, Home Depot sell houses? He was like, yeah, Home Depot sell houses. I said, how does Home Depot sell houses? He said, they do. They sell houses, they just sell them to you in parts. They take a whole house and they sell it to you in parts. Yeah. They got a piece of the roofing over here. They got the bathroom over here. They got the kitchen over there. They got the laundry over there. So they just took a house and they just broke it down into different parts. And they That's sell it smart. just how I was looking at this whole technology thing. So I said, I got to get into the tech industry some kind of way. So I said, let me go to school to learn how to code or become an engineer, something like that. So I'm talking to my family, talking to my sister about it. And she said, have you ever heard of tech sales? I said, no, I've never heard anything about tech sales. So she started sending me this information about tech sales. And then she sent me Cyrus Instagram. So then once I saw Cyrus Instagram, I started looking at his content. And once he mentioned tech boot camps and he was into tech and he had no degree and no experience, I said, yeah, this is the play, this is the play right here. This is the play right here. So I'm watching and consuming Cyrus content. And then from there, when he introduces the boot camps, I said, man, I got to take one of these boot camps. So I looked at both the boot camps. One of them was out of my range financially. So I said, I got to go with the one that was in my range financially. I looked at that one and said, okay, once I get my money, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And then when I saw that it had a payment plan option, I said, yes. I said, this is it. Course careers is it. You got the payment plan option. And shoot, that's right up my alley. So when I got a paycheck, I took that after I paid everything that I needed to pay. I took that last hundred dollars and I got started with my course careers right there. And that was in July of 2022. Last week in July, I went ahead and paid for it, got access to the course, got my books off of Amazon because I had to buy my books, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Spend Selling, Fanatical Prospecting, had to buy those, start reading those books. And that's how I got started in tech sales. That's a great story. That's a great story. It allows people to really see the trajectory of where you're going. Like you could see it so vividly. And so one of the things that they're like, oh man, people are like, oh, what kind of company you went with and stuff like that. If you want to find that information, go to his LinkedIn. This is definitely there. I'll put it in the description below, but I want to talk to you now and we're going to go now that you're in tech, a couple of questions. Do you love it? Do you like it? And what is a day in a life for you as a sales development representative? 
Yes. So is, I'm glad you asked that, uh, asked that question because actually I'm going to be, I was supposed to have been put together some content on a day in the life on as a tech sales, in tech sales and as a SDR. So I have the content. I just need to go ahead and edit it and put it out. But the uh, short version of that is number one, to answer your question, do I like it or love it? Yes, I love it. Number one is because it's remote, so I don't have to go nowhere. I can be at home, which is beautiful for me because it allows me to do other things that I need to be at home to do. I'm a content creator, so I shoot a lot of content. So me being able to work from home is just amazing. I do a podcast. I do all of that stuff from my home. So being able to be here is amazing. I don't have to go to work and then be subject to all of the different things they have you subjected to in an office. No peach tree traffic <laughs> yeah, violations. No, uh -uh. None of that. Don't got to go downtown, midtown, none of that. I'm good. I can be at home and it allows me to still be able to spend time with my family because my daughter's in extracurricular activities. They got to be picked up from school, dropped off to school because they don't ride the school bus. So all of that different stuff allows me to work remotely, allows me to do that. So I love the fact that I'm able to work remotely. The other thing about it is man, I'm learning so much about the different products and the services that my company off is offering. So I think it's beautiful that I'm with the company that I'm with because it's a mixture of, of software or workflow integration, which is really uh, software for sales and for businesses and for really back office development stuff so you i'm learning a lot of stuff about cloud and, and oh, integration right on one side of the house but then also we have a cyber security department which is fairly new so i'm learning step by step a lot of the different cyber security things so i'm learning about SOC analysts i'm learning about ransomware i'm learning about the ways that a companies are hacked through phishing emails and through all these different type of different ways, ransomware, obviously, um, all these different tactics that are used to, to infiltrate and companies. So I'm learning a lot of diff that different type of stuff on, on the cybersecurity side. I'm learning about how cybersecurity works and you know why it's extremely important. I would have never known before I was working for a company that so cybersecurity and IT services, how important cybersecurity is. And people think that they get a Norton antivirus and that's really like cybersecurity. And that's, that's cool for your house. But when you talk about running for, when you got a business, you can't be leaving it to Norton to no. secure your business. And then when you sit around and you look at all these data breaches that they have, either Wells Fargo, Bank of America, even a last pass that's supposed to secure your password, they have a data breach. You understand me? And it's all because they don't have robust cybersecurity in place and they pay it for it. So the ransomware piece is huge because a lot of companies are falling victim, especially small and medium sized businesses, not the large corporations, not your corporations that are on Wall Street and your Fortune 500s, but a lot of the small and medium sized businesses are prime targets for a ransomware attack. Why? Because they don't prioritize cybersecurity and they use a Norton antivirus and that's why they get breached and then they getting hacked and then they having to pay these ransoms in Bitcoin in order to get their data back. And sometimes even after you pay the ransom, you still don't get the data no back. No guarantee. Right, you still don't get the data back. And then you become a soft target and they know because if you pay the ransom, then they know they can get the ransom up out of you at any given time so they can affect you again. Cybersecurity is extremely important. So I'm learning so much in the, cy in the cyberspace as well. The new knowledge, the ability to work remotely. And then of course the pay is, is definitely beautiful for a entry level position. Remember it's just, I'm just starting at entry level. I just started in October entry level and performing at a high level that I am and the company that I'm with, I'm definitely projected to be promoted in the next couple of months. So that's going to obviously lead to pay increase, but also the content that I'm creating around technology as well because of my brand is also going to help with sponsorships and things like that as it pertains to being able to secure other avenues of money as well and that's one of the things i like about it's a lot of different opportunities that's available to you it's not just working for a company but if you network and if you know the right people then you are able to secure a lot of different opportunities for yourself that are that is lucrative if you're able to take advantage of them. absolutely i think that's key right there is that 
tech is almost like a open it's like a key to another world not world but like another building an open door basically to some other opportunities that you may not even realize that you could obtain to and so i have another question to ask you before we go to the brain because somebody actually mentioned it to me they're like listen you know how like i hear everybody talking about all the great stuff about getting into tech what are the negative things that you've experienced while working in the tech industry now that you've broken in that's a question i've gotten so i was like you know let me pass that question to you see if you have any negative things that you could say about working in tech me i haven't personally ran into something specific that i could speak to as yet you still have to you still have to perform you still have to be professional you still have to respect the opportunity that's you know what i mean by that is you still have a you still have a job to do and because you don't come into an office or have a supervisor walking past your desk every 30 to an hour to check on you to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do you still are expected to complete tasks you still expected to be able to make your meetings hit your goals and do all of that stuff so you still have to put the work in so while people talk about being able to work remote and they can travel with their work and still do different things like that, you still have to do the work. You can't just be traveling and making content for Instagram and not doing the work because eventually you're going to end up being, they're going to end up letting you go. They're going to see that you're not working, you're not producing anything, and they will ultimately let you go. So you have to perform the work. You have to study your products, study your services, so that you're able to properly relay that in your in, to your customers, to your clients, as you're having those conversations. So you have to put in the work. I would say the negative is going to come if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Even though it's beautiful to work remotely, it's beautiful to make all this money, it's not going to happen or stay that way for long if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So just because you have to work remotely and you know ain't nobody looking at you all the time doesn't mean that it gives you a free pass to just do what you want to do and think you're going to be able to maintain that but that's what i would say with that you still have to show up and do the work and hit your goals and do all those different things now as far as a day in the life you mentioned that as well as far as a day in the life i usually start my day around nine o'clock my time and i would say i'm on i'm in atlanta so that's eastern standard time and yep. it's different, obviously, when you're working remotely because you start your day at your at your time where it may be a little early where your coworkers are and maybe a little bit later where your coworkers are. So I'm strictly going off Eastern Standard Time. So I start my day around 9 a.m. And I usually get in, check my emails and come down in the office. I check my emails. And uh, once, my, once I check my emails, I reply back to anybody that may have reached out and had interest in trying to book a meeting. I go over my goals and my tasks task for the day. If I have email sequences that have to go out or if there are Zoom info lists that I need to export and to get ready to put, a put into a sequence and all those different things. So I check off those different things. I look on my calendar because we use Teams at work. So I look in my calendar to see what meetings I have scheduled and all of those different things to make sure I make those meetings. And I just literally go off of the goals that I have. Usually try to make about a hundred calls a day is the goal. Doesn't, don't always make the goal depending on what's going on, what's going on during that day. But it's a goal for the, that I have. So if I don't make a certain amount of calls that day, long as I reach my goal on Friday, of uh, the overall goal for the week, then that's good to go. I set my time up for emailing, cold calling, and then working on just business development stuff. So that's just prospecting. I'm going through leads that I have and reaching out to them, looking up their information on Zoom info, things like that, trying to find the key influential people in the company, getting on LinkedIn, scrubbing LinkedIn, trying to make some connections on LinkedIn, make create some content that can draw some inspiration, some leads from the content that we put out based around current events and stories that's happening and things like that. So that's what's going on throughout the course of the day. A lot of emailing, of course, you want to get on the phone and you want to try to make some meetings happen on the phone, going into the sequences, finding out what sequences are ready for phone calls, those sequences that are ready for phone calls, start knocking out those phone calls and pretty much knocking out those goals and then closing the day out usually around 4, 4.30. For example, today <clears throat> was not a lot of business development stuff because I already had a lot of meetings set up. We had 
some meetings at a couple of at a meeting set up where to create a sequence for a new product that's coming out for cybersecurity. So I had to create an email sequence for that. I had two meetings already set up that I already had pre-booked with potential clients that I had to do as well as another team meeting as well. So between all of those meetings, it was a little bit of business development, but most of them were just doing research, gathering notes and preparing for those meetings for today. Now tomorrow, it's gonna be got it's gonna be a little bit different. Don't have as many meetings. So I'm gonna have the opportunity to do a lot more business development, a lot more prospecting and all those different things. So the day to day varies based on what you have going on. But again, I've been I got my foot feet wet already. So I'm booking meetings and stuff, so it's getting a lot busier. When you first start though, it's not gonna be like that. You're just literally gonna be training. That's what you're gonna be doing for the majority of the time that you are you are locked in to work is going to be training. You're going to be going through the certification courses that they have either on Salesforce or HubSpot, right? As an SDR, they're going to be teaching you how to utilize that CRM. So it's a bunch of different certifications that you have to do that. So you're going to be learning that. You're going to be learning your product or your service. So you're going to be taking time, spending time learning that. And obviously, hopefully getting coaching from those in leadership at your company on those products and those services. So you're gonna be learning a lot about that. You're gonna be learning a lot about their sales methodology, their sales process, all of those different things. So they're, they should not be expecting to be booking any meetings as an SDR in the first one to two months or even three months because you're gonna just be learning all a bunch of different information. And then probably on the second to third month is when you're gonna start getting on the phone and calling some different people. So as you get on the phone, that's gonna be like riding a bike. So if for anybody who remember the first time they learned how to ride a bike, it's just like that. You're gonna be getting on the bike, you're gonna be falling off because you don't know what you're doing, but what you have to do is get off the ground, get back up and get back on the bike. So you're gonna be getting on the phone, you're gonna be fumbling and bumbling, you're not gonna know what to say, you're gonna be missing the whole thing, but that's just part of it. The more you get on the phone, the more fluent you get with what you're saying, and the more you study the product and the services, the better you'll be able to relay that message once you get them on the phone. So it's, it's the riding the bike process as you learn how to be on the phone and learn how to be a better cold caller. So you're going to get hung up on, you're going to have people who don't answer the phone, you get a lot of answer machines, so you're going to be leaving a ton of messages. That's just part of the deal as an SDR. But that's pretty much what a day in the life of an SDR is, what to expect in the beginning. And then as you get better and better, then you'll start, then your workload will obviously start to pick up because you have more things to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> it's that very detailed. It, it's so much that goes into it, but it's rewarding. And I think the greatest thing I could say about being in tech sales, specifically as an SDR, or even an account executive, I can imagine is that you're really getting rewarded for the things that you do because of that commission check. It really does feel, it feels different because it's performance based. Now, let me just ask you this. Um, we're going to the brain now and I wanted to ask you, what is the mindset that you think someone needs to have to be able to land a job as an SDR like you did, but also to scale from there and to go and do bigger and greater things? Yes. So the type of mindset that you have to have is you have to remove the fear that stops us from being able to uh, step into the unknown. Fear is what blocks us and stops us from being successful. And anything that you set your mind to do, fear is what stops you from doing it. Whatever you set your mind to do is going to be something fearful that's going to stop you from doing it. Oh, I want to move to this particular state, but you don't move because you don't know anybody out there. I don't have a support system out there. I don't have a job out there. So all of those different things are things that your mind puts out based on the fear that you have of going into the unknown. I don't know if I can do tech sales because I don't know if I can talk on the phone. I don't know if I can do X, Y, and Z. But they'll train you to do those different things. And yes, I do believe though, it is a certain personality that you have to have in order to be a tech sales. So if you're a very introverted person, then I don't think tech sales would be the right avenue for you. A non-customer facing role or something, IT help desk, back office, on the back end, network of security, things that don't have to do with talking to people, 
is more of what an introverted person would probably be more successful at. But an extroverted person who doesn't mind talking to people, striking up conversations with strangers and things of that nature, that stuff, tech sales leans into that type of personality. But even with a person that has that personality, you have to stop allowing fear to dictate your, your movements. Because when you are fearful of something, which everybody will be, because that's just a human thing, a human characteristic is to be afraid because there are things out here that will make you afraid, but you can't allow the fear to stop you from overcoming. So you have to challenge that fear. Not saying that you won't ever be afraid, but you have to challenge the fear so that you can overcome. And when you challenge the fear and you actually overcome, then that just gives you more strength, more confidence to challenge the next obstacle that's in your path for you to be able to overcome that. So I would say that we have to remove the fear from the unknown and from things that we don't quite know or understand that's stopping us from moving forward. And that will allow you to start to see more progression and start to see more success in the things that you want to do and that you want to accomplish in life. Because tech sales is about overcoming obstacles and overcoming fear. If you're afraid to get hung up on, you're not going to be successful. If you're afraid for people that don't want to talk to you, if you're afraid of rejection, if you're not a creative person, then you know all of those things are going to hinder you if you try to get into the tech sales industry. If you are afraid, which, some, which a lot of people, but you're not afraid to challenge the fear, then you can't be successful. Because some people start off timid and nervous, like I said, the riding the bike process, you falling off, but that's all part of the process. But will you get back up and try it again? Will you get back up and try to overcome that fear that caused you to fall? Because that's what you fell for when you was riding the bike. You was fearful of the bike tipping over because you didn't know how to do the balance thing, right? So you was afraid. So you put your foot down and you fell off the bike. Once you got back up on the bike and you learned how to balance it and you understood what was going on, now you wasn't afraid to fall no more. And guess what? You became more proficient. You became a better rider. You became a master bike rider. Now you start jumping on curbs and doing all type of stuff. But you see the difference after you overcome that fear. Now you are now able to expand yourself and push yourself to the limit because fear is no longer a factor. So you have a fear factor in everything that you do. But once you are able to overcome that fear factor, then you are able to now maximize your potential within that particular area of human endeavor. So it's a beautiful thing. And you see it in all types of different activities, whether it's dog training, whether it's horseback riding, whether it's riding dirt bikes, I do all of those different things. So I'm using them as examples. But as you break the fear, then you're able to expand. You're afraid of falling off the horse, but once you fall and you get back up and then you get a better understanding of what you're doing, then you can start riding better. You start riding more aggressive. You start riding more faster. Same thing with the dirt bike. You fall off the bike a couple of times, but then once you understand, you get over that fear, you understand how to operate the bike and you get over the fear. Now you riding faster, you doing willies, you popping the bike up in the air, you doing all that stuff. Why? Because the fear factor is gone. And it's the same exact thing in tech sales. Once you get over those initial humps and you get comfortable with the information, comfortable with the product, comfortable with the services, then now you're able to take a call and you're able to identify the pain points of this particular person in the company and what product or service fits them the best and how you can present that to them. And you're not afraid to ask them to book a meeting and they'll take the meeting and then you say, look what I did. You give yourself a pat on the back and say, look what I did. And that's because you was able to overcome that fear. So that's what I was saying to that. Yeah, overcoming fear is huge. It's a learning curve with anything. There's a learning curve and tech sales is no different. So you have to be able to overcome the fear. Say, hello, fear. Destiny is here. I'm ready to take over. And that's right. absolutely the truth right there. So thank you so much, brother King Cam, Zachy, for joining this program. This is going to be something that a lot of people that are aspiring to be SDRs. I would actually say if you have an aspiring on your link to just take it off. You're an SDR, right? Just you know, just go for it. Don't let fear get in the way. Don't let it hold you back because you are there. So thank you so much for being part of this program. And thank you for watching. And if you are interested in becoming an SDR, similar to not only Zachy, but myself, go ahead go to courts careers the description is below 
those that are interested in joining doing tech sales to become an SDR or someone interested in becoming IT or even in digital marketing, it's all right there below. Use the promo code Joseph50. And I believe that you would have your lives changed just the same way that Zachy and myself had our lives changed by this. So thank you so much to everyone that's joining us again. Till next time, I hope to see you on the other side. Take care, family. The truth is coming out. The truth is coming.